All right, our format is a little different today. I have a good amount to say about the developmental process of this recipe and technique, and I didn't want to include like four minutes of footage of my empty mixing bowl while I rambled on and on about what a mastermind I am before I got to the actual instructions. So the recipe and instructions are on screen while I just kind of talk about my genius. This is probably very nice for those with auditory disabilities and probably a good bit trickier for those without them to be able to keep up with both streams at once. Or maybe not. Let me know if you prefer this format. It was pretty fun to edit. Anyhow, as the title says, this technique involves making bread from a bechamel sauce, or for my fellow southerners, sawmill gravy. It is inspired by my consideration of Japanese-style milk bread. For those not in the know, milk bread is an incredibly soft, spongy bread made by cooking some flour and milk until it forms a thick paste, and then incorporating that paste into a dough. The reason this works is that as the flour cooks in the liquid, the starch granules absorb and swell until they outright burst, sending chains of carbohydrates out into the liquid, which all sort of bind together, creating a mesh of sorts that largely forms a, a gel or, like I said, a paste. To get a mental image of this, uh, we'll stick with Alton Brown's iconography of a bunch of bungee cords all crossing over each other and linking together to form a matrix of sorts. This matrix traps liquid molecules within it, causing the bread baked with it to retain more moisture and have a softer texture. Well, my thought process went, another example of cooking flour and milk until the starch bursts and thickens it is the classic bechamel. And I wondered if bread made with a bechamel would work similarly. And then I began thinking about how people create different sauces from a bechamel base or mother sauce, and how easy that would be to add flavors to a bread if it worked that way. This led me to consider the absolutely cheese-packed sauce that people use when making fancier macaroni and cheese. See, a big problem I've always had with loaves of cheesy bread, which are traditionally made with cubed or shredded cheese mixed into the dough, is that as the cheese melts into the bread during baking, it leaves these huge voids in the crumb that prevent the bread from being used as sandwich bread, or from being topped with any sorts of spreads or butter, as any sort of condiment or sauce or anything liquid just runs straight through the voids onto your hands. Do an image search for cheese bread if you aren't familiar with what I mean, there's plenty of good examples there. But melting the cheese prior to incorporating it into the dough would utterly solve this problem and likely get me some sort of international award if I could pull it off. But developing the recipe took a little while. We ran into a few troubles along the way. Too much cheese created a greasy, heavy texture. Too little cheese created a La Croix-esque essence instead of any actual flavor. Using only the cheese sauce to hydrate the dough severely blunted the rise and the gluten formation, but adding too much liquid uh, created too high hydration of a dough and yielded a more open crumb, which just replicated the problem that I initially had with the concept of cheese bread. In the end, I think this recipe is about as close to perfect as possible with the concept of using a cheese sauce to make bread, or at least as close to perfect as I could get in several attempts. But regardless, I think I'll do more experimenting with bechamel breads and see what other kind of flavors I can create. Of the problems I mentioned, we solved them by decreasing the amount of cheddar I was using to cut down on the greasy texture. However, to beef up the cheese flavor, we added not only Parmesan cheese, but also mustard powder and cayenne. Mustard and chili are two flavors that really enhance and complement cheesiness, and they're used in everything from most mac and cheese recipes to store-bought cheese crackers like Cheez-Its. 
to improve gluten formation and yeast activity, we prehydrate some of our flour and get the yeast really rioting in there before we work it into our larger dough, uh, sort of like the baking concept of a sponge. Now, this specific loaf isn't a true Japanese-style milk bread. I don't want to accidentally fool you because I talked about it earlier. It's nowhere near as light and airy. It has nearly half a pound of cheese in, on, and around it. There's no way it would be able to maintain that airy, ethereal texture. The specific recipe is a cheese bread first and foremost. However, what it does get from the benefits of the aforementioned burst starch granules is a soft, spongy texture and a greatly increased shelf life. As that matrix of carbohydrates we mentioned holds on to liquids more effectively than a traditional dough's structure, this bread is quite slow to stale. Anyhow, enough about this specific recipe. I have several more ideas for videos in store in the coming weeks, but if you have something that you'd like to see me do, feel free to drop me a comment with a request. Uh, whether it's vague or something really specific, I'm down to work on a recipe for most things. A friend of mine is having some sourdough difficulties, so I'm thinking that my next video will be a beginner-friendly sourdough recipe that needs no special equipment whatsoever, so I'm hoping that that one turns out well. By the way, if you're looking for applications for this bread, it's great as a savory toast, good for sandwiches or alongside a saucy entree, and, well, consider the grilled cheese.